Hello, friends, and welcome to Brick House Bones, episode 40. Man, it should be like this. Yeah, okay, 40. 40 weeks in a row showing you the large variety of exercises that I use in the clinic, that I use to help people make their bodies and bones stronger and resilient and fracture-proof. Now, today is really the, the culmination of all the work that we've been doing week to week. I've got four fantastic and really impactful exercises. If you watch the last couple weeks, these last three weeks, 38, 39, and 40, I really think are some of the most important exercises people can do, so you can re-watch those. I have some, uh, some equipment that we're going to need today, uh, but first of all, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. We are making a small pivot to the Brick House Bones method where I'm trying to make all of this information more clear, more precise, especially for beginners, where you can just touch the video, hit play, and know exactly what you're supposed to do. So I'm working on developing that. That's gonna be coming next week. So with video one on the Brick House Bones method, if this is what you like, then stay tuned, subscribe, and make sure you get notified for that video. Today, before I tell you the four exercises, we are going to be using a foam roll doing a wonderful, nice stretch for our posture. I do this in the clinic almost every single day. We will be using a small box to begin box jumps. If you're able to do jumps, this is where we're starting. We've been working on this through all these videos. Only do this if it is safe for you. And if you're not sure, check with your favorite PT or doctor before you start. But you can watch and see how we do it. We're also gonna be doing thrusters, a total body movement that really builds strength and resistance. And another exercise that is imperative to keep your ability to get on and off the floor. And if you've lost that ability, then you need to watch this technique. And maybe if you practice, it will get better. Okay, lastly, I want to thank supporters. Supporters in your life, supporters in your world. None of these videos would be on YouTube. None of this information that I share would be available if I didn't have the complete support of my spouse. He encourages me, pushes me, and then selflessly shares our time together, allowing me to be here on weekends and evenings and days off so that I can film and record this stuff for you. You see a 10 or 15 minute video, you don't know how many hours it takes to produce that. And he never makes me feel bad about putting time into doing this for you. He's always, always supporting me. So if you appreciate Eric is his name, say thanks Eric, it's down below. Thanks for sharing Lisa with us. And if you have somebody you want to give a shout out, your person that has your back, that supports you no matter what, even if sometimes that person is you, then give yourself a pat on the back or share how proud you are or thankful you are for the person that is supporting you. We all need the support. And I'm so thankful for Eric that I can do these videos for you. Okay, enough chit chat. It's always nice to show appreciation though, right? And I do appreciate him. Uh, foam rolls. You guys, we're doing a back bend over a foam roll. And this is a really, really great posture exercise. But it's not perfect for everyone. So if you have quite a bit of hunch and you have never worked on reversing that hunch with pivoting over a foam roll, then there's a few options for you. And all of these options are available. I've got the links that you can get them on the Amazon store that's listed below. It doesn't cost you any more to use those links. I just try to make it easy for you to get them. So this is a full foam roll. I get this white one. It doesn't have any other features on it, and that's why I like it. It's not the hardest. It's kind of a medium density foam roll, so it's not too, too firm on your back. Uh, and I, I like this quality for people that can do that level of back bend. If that's too much of a back bend, they also have a half of a roll. So if you want to just have a smaller back bend, a half a roll can work well for you if you can tolerate that somewhat firm pressure on your back. And if you haven't done any of that before, well, you certainly can use a pillow. A pillow works well. Or this is a padded soft roll. So this is going to give a really soft, soft stretch to you. It's not going to be an aggressive stretch. It's going to be a very gentle stretch. This is a bolster or a massage bolster, but it works perfect for this instance. So you have many options. 
If you uh, got a foam roll, then you're probably familiar with it. That's what I'm going to use here today. Uh, and I can, I love this stretch. I feel like this has helped me to maintain my posture really, really well and to help get that stretch from that area where it's really, really difficult to get to. If you're spending time in the kitchen and you're cooking and you start to get that pain in your middle back, I get that too. This is what I do for it. <laughs> so coming down here in this seated position, then I reach back so that I can get this roll right about bra line. So somewhere in between those right below the shoulder blades, middle back, right where the bra comes. And then hands go behind the head. A lot of people like to have their elbows out wide, but I want you to have your elbows in. So this will also get a nice stretch to the shoulders. And I'm supporting my head, so my head has support. And now I'm just using this roll as a pivot point and allow this just lovely opening stretch for the front body and then come back down. Now again, you may have a lot of stiffness here. I see many, many people that are very stiff in this direction because they've never stretched this way. And this is kind of the opposite of how gravity works on our spine that pushes us into that more hunched or rounded position. So you see I've done several back bends here and come up and then I can move the roll slightly higher in my back and repeat that back and release. And you only go as far as feels good in your body. This feels good to me. It's not painful. It doesn't hurt. Feels like a really wonderful stretch or opening through the middle back. And maybe it feels better a little lower. Oh yeah, that feels great. So you can try a few different positions. Do not do this on your lumbar spine. It's only for your middle back, not your neck, not your lumbar spine. So right around the bra line, a little bit above it, a little bit below it. See how that feels. If that looks too intense for you or you're not sure, check with your PT and see if that's a safe maneuver for you. All right, so foam roll back bends. Gosh, I feel taller already. Such a great, great mobilization for our thoracic spine. And then after we loosen that up, that's what I feel. I feel like I can, I can stand a little taller. I feel like I'm a little more open versus, oh, it's so easy to get curved in here. And as I watch the videos that I do and see some of the work, I see that I still have some of that, that flexed posture through there. I can be taller. So yes, this is wonderful. Doing these videos is helpful for me as well. So that was our posture component. Now our balance component, and this is the one I'm using um, my balance pad as a knee pad, makes my knees happier. This is the exercise that you need for getting on and off the floor, for maintaining that ability to always be able to get on and off the floor. And I know not everybody watching can kneel. If you've already lost the ability to kneel, any bit of practice that you can do kneeling on your bed, on a soft surface, on your ottoman, something really padded, practicing kneeling, even for just a few seconds at a time, may make a difference on your ability to get up and down from the floor should you end up there in the future. And for those of you that can still get up and down, but maybe it's a little difficult, this is what we need to practice. So I'm tall kneeling on both knees, one foot up, one foot back, other foot up other foot back. So this is working both hip mobility and balance in kneeling. This is the position we want to get into in order to get up off the floor. But we have to have the mobility and the balance to get there first. To me, this is mobility that we need to practice for the rest of our life in order to be able to get in these positions and not make our world smaller. Smaller. When you can't get on and off the floor, on and off the ground, so much changes in how you interact with grandchildren, animals, gardening, perhaps things that you enjoyed that, uh, you know, gardening is a big one. But I see a lot of folks that have limited in engagement and how they deal, deal with grandkids that are on the ground and playing and they can't get there. Okay, we've already done a whole bunch of those. This is a fantastic mobility exercise. I believe it's in one of my complete exercise routines too. 
but I highly recommend if you can practice that, you do it. All right, next up coming is thrusters. For thrusters, I'm using a kettlebell for my weights. You can use a dumbbell. I just like the way the kettlebell sits in the palm of my hand right in front of my shoulder. It just stacks really nicely there. I, I feel like it lays better to me than a, a, just a dumbbell does. And then, so you can do this one weight only on one arm, or you can do both arms like I'm doing. So a thruster looks like this. So heart up, chest up, squat, tailboat down, power up. I did that very slowly. But we're using the legs to drive the weight overhead. If you're doing one arm, you would do it like this. I would like to do it two arms today. So, keeping the weight close to the body, we are going for eight. Here we go. One, the legs are the driver. Two, these are harder exercises. If you've been watching, you've seen that we've progressed a lot of the moves. Six, seven, eight. Excellent. Now, you could do that with no weight. You could do that with one or two pounds. You can do it with whatever works for you at this point in your exercise and treatment. This is what you can adjust. You can still work on the movement even though you're not moving a lot of weight. The movement will help build strength and mobilization as you get stronger, you add more weight. A couple of water bottles or soup cans is a great place to start. Don't minimize that at all. It all counts. So I did eight repetitions. We shoot for between that six and 12, six and 10 range because we want that kind of intensity to our movements. So eight repetitions, working up to being able to do three sets of that exercise in an exercise session. So if you're working out one day in, in, in your, your week, it's Monday morning, you're doing thrusters in your workout. If you can work up to three sets of eight repetitions, that would be a good goal to have. You don't need to do that every day. Twice a week would be the most you would do that one. Okay, lastly, we're going for box jumps. And if I didn't say on the on the back bends on the roll, you can do that every day. That's a nice posture exercise. Posture can be done every day, and that mobility exercise could also be done every day. At least a couple days a week, that would be a good routine. So we've done lots of variations of jumps and hops and skips, forward movements, sideward movements, power with the hands, power with the legs. This is the last step, the ability to jump up on a box. Again, this is not appropriate for everyone. So if you have knee replacements or you've had fractures, then just watch this one and do some of the other power moves. We don't need to be able to do all the different things. But if you're just trying to protect your bone health, build bone health, and you haven't had a fracture, and you've been practicing impact moves, and you wanna get your jumps in, then this is the place to start. I've used the box on my lowest setting, so that's four inches. You have to do a couple of things. We gotta load the spring, so we gotta load, and then when you jump, you have to pick your feet up. You gotta pick your feet up and move slightly forward, and you have to stick the landing. So we go load, knees come up, land. And I land deliberately. I land with a little bit of force, a little bit of noise. I don't land with a stiff, or locked knee. My knees are bent. You can still absorb the force. You're still getting the impact and the benefit. Jump, step down. Jump, step down. If you're new to these, start with a low box. Don't start high. Gradually increase it. Going for 10 right here. One, two, Three, four, five, if you're really good, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. Tell me who is your support person down below. I thank you, Eric, for being my support person because I really take so much joy in sharing this with all of you and hearing from all of you all over the world, all over the country that are watching these videos and making themselves stronger and more resilient and fracture proof. You guys rock. So stay tuned next week for the Brick House Bones Method where we start with the basics for beginners exactly what you need to do. Thank you, everyone.